Good afternoon guys, thanks for checking out my video on this Tucson Tuesday. Since my last video I've actually had a couple more deliveries so the Tucson box is growing and in an attempt here to get caught up on some of these new arrivals I'm going to dump a few of them into this video. We'll see how many I can get through here today. But first one I want to start with is actually one that I had a couple years back and you know I got rid of it thinking it was too small for my hand and I'm not sure if they changed it a little bit or maybe my taste has changed and that it doesn't feel as bad as it did before but this one is I don't remember the number this is uh, called the Tucson hunting claw and this is a green micarta handle the original version was in D2 steel but this one is in 14 C 28 N this is a night morning design and they stopped making it for a while and when they finally brought it back it got kind of expensive for a little bit and then the price dropped back down to like the you know thirty dollar mark which i think is really good for what you're getting here and surprisingly this time around i'm not feeling like it's as uncomfortably small as i thought the first time around so there is definitely still the chance you could nick your finger right there you're kind of close to the blade it would be smart to kind of round that off with a file a little bit but other than that it's not too bad ergonomically in your hand especially in the reverse grip this is actually pretty comfortable like this for my hand size um, I think the one thing that they maybe could have changed a little bit was to bring the handle material down a little bit farther closer to the ring so when you grip it there's something underneath your pinky right there so you have a full grip on it and I have considered taking this off and making my own handle scales for this one I'm not, you know, I'm not sure if this is G10 or Micarta, to be honest with you. It's listed as Micarta, but this might be G10. But, yeah, so it comes with a Kydex sheath and a push-button type tech lock clip. And the one thing about this one is sheath is a little loose. The Kydex needs to be reformed, which is really easy. You just take a heat gun and pinch it and squeeze it in a few spots and tighten it up so it doesn't rattle. So easy fix, but again, for 30 bucks, I figured I'd get another one, and I'm kind of glad that I did because I'm liking it more the second time around. So that's the first one I wanted to show you today. So moving on, the next one is going to be this guy. This is one that I... It was always on kind of my, my C or D list of knives to check out. Not that I had anything against it. I just always assumed it was going to be too small for my taste and just never decided to get one, but ended up getting a, a good price on it on eBay and figured why not. This one is in D2 steel, also a night morning design. This is the TS-79 slide. You can see it's got this nice red carbon fiber. And a couple of other people have had this one on their channel recently. This, again, is kind of an older design, but I'm glad I finally got around to getting one. I think I bought this back in February, and I thought it was lost in the mail, but it finally just randomly showed up the other day. So, surprisingly nicer than I thought it was going to be. It It is a smaller knife. I'll give you a length on this guy. This one is 7 inches overall. So... You know, to me, that's, you know, an inch shy of where I really like a, a pocket knife, personally. But it's not uncomfortably small. It does fit in my hand in basically a four-finger grip. And the one thing about it is the clip actually fills your hand this way a little bit as much as this way. So it doesn't feel uncomfortably small down there at the, at the back part of the knife. Now, this one is a little bit tight. It could stand to be loosened up a little bit it's got really snappy action but you know as far as being that nice drop shut that everybody's looking for this one is not this one is pretty pretty tight now i don't usually take apart or clean or do anything to these before i show them on camera i like to just take them out of the package wipe off the oil and see how they are right from the factory to kind of get a baseline of you know what you're getting and for the most part they all operate pretty decent out of the box, but some of them can be improved with a little bit of cleaning and maintenance. So this one could probably stand to be taken apart and, uh, you know, cleaned up and re-lubricated and put back together and adjusted and whatnot. So 
the blade shape on it, it's got this really nice wide flat grind and real thin down behind the edge. This is going to be an incredibly good slicer of a knife. And the blade itself kind of reminds me, actually the ergonomics in general remind me a little bit of the TS-102. So if you are familiar with that one, this one feels kind of similar in hand. However, I do think I like that one a little bit better. But anyway, the TS-79 slide. So moving on, I'm gonna look at this one next. This was an incredible surprise, actually. And when I first saw this one, I, I like the look of it. This is the TS-201, and this is a G10 with laminated carbon fiber designed by Rattlesnake. Let's see if I can focus here. There you go, there's the moniker. And I'm not sure how many Rattlesnake designs are out there. There's a few of them. Um, a couple of slip joints, I think, that, you know, really don't usually do too much for me. But this was the first one that I saw, and I was like, wow, that's kind of a cool-looking knife. Okay, let's check it out. So, I probably paid a little bit more than I needed to, because I got this one a while ago, and it did finally just show up. But they are down around, like, the $45 mark at this point, which, to me, for what you're getting with this one, I think is a great deal. This is, in fact, a really nice budget knife. Everything about this one works well and feels comfortable and is exactly what I like in a knife. I mean, personally, I I honestly wouldn't change anything about this one. I really like it exactly the way it is. It's got, you know, your lanyard point down there. It's got a nice full backspacer almost all the way up so there is an exposed blade back there. It's got a nice big deliberate flipper tab that's easy, comes out, nice positive snap to it. I like the harpoon blade shape. And then the access for the thumb. This right here, I mean, I don't know why more people don't just do this right off the bat. So you can easily get your thumb in there and move that lock bar over and close this knife. I mean, it's just nice when it's as comfortable to close as it is to open. It really makes for a nice full package all the way around. And this is a good knife. I really like this one a lot, actually. Um, you know, it's got the nice deep carry clip on it, which works great. And all the way around. I mean, I think the only minor thing that you would even consider doing to this one might be to just take it apart and take some sandpaper and hit all the the edges and corners just to soften them a little bit and make it even more comfortable in your hand but as it is this is a great knife so I really like this one a lot definitely recommend it this one is also in the Sandvik steel so killer budget knife if you ask me did a really nice job on the design I absolutely love this one to be honest with you I really I will be getting another one because actually this one is already committed to a friend of mine and I think he is definitely going to enjoy it. Hopefully he likes it as much as I do. So the TS-201, I don't know if it had a name, but by designed by Rattlesnake. So, moving on, let's get into some higher end steels. This. TS-81 in S90V. Now, I like the original version with the bone and the D2 blade. I thought it was a nice knife, but this one, man, this is a great looking knife. I think this one improves everywhere that that one needed it to be. You know, you get upgraded blade steel and this really nice carbon fiber insert this is a killer knife. I mean, I was just waiting to get one for a good price, and I finally did. I think I paid around a hundred bucks for this one. Um, not much more than that, if any, and that, to me, is an incredible deal for this knife. I, Like I said, I always like the general shape and design of it, but I think the carbon fiber is just a lot more utilitarian than the bone inserts, and that black just really gives it a cool classy look so 
very happy with this one. This is in the Keeper collection for sure. I am definitely, definitely going to keep this one. Uh, I, I can't say that about all Tucson knives. In fact, I don't keep the majority of the Tucson knives that I end up getting. It's rare that they go into my permanent collection, but that's where this one is going to go. So, the TS-81 by Wong Design in S90V with this beautiful carbon fiber. So, continuing on with some S90V going to talk about this one. This is the TS191 by Mazwan Mokhtar Design. And the instant I saw this one, I knew I had to have it. This is just a good looking design. Nice, beefy, full size knife. I mean, I always check out the overall length on them. And pretty much anything under 200 millimeters is questionable and I know if it's over 200 millimeters it's it's definitely going to be a nice big knife and this one's like 209 or 210 or something it's a it's a big knife so I'll give you some standard measurements on it this one is almost eight and three quarters overall so it's a it's a fairly good sized knife I'll actually give you the weight on this one too it's pretty substantial this one is 5.35 ounces so it's not a small knife it it feels really good in your hand now the one thing about this one I did notice it feels slim in your hand it's it's not a bulky knife this way and I like that it gives it a nice feel in your hand I really love the way he has the back enclosed like this with both sides just coming together that to me I mean, short of having an integral, this is a good looking design, nice and clean on the back. No chance to get your finger in there and, and slice it on the blade when it's closed. So that is a, is definitely a, a win for me. And then the carbon fiber on both sides, I know some people really like that symmetrical look and it's a really good looking knife. This thumb ramp back here feels so good in, in the grip, it just, you are locked into this knife. It is just a great solid grip all the way around so I really am liking this one quite a bit now a couple things that I did notice about this one and you know I'm not nitpicking I do love the design overall but I'm gonna you know tell you the things that I personally notice about it just in case it's one that you're looking at and just something to be aware of so you can make your own decisions but some things on this knife that I did notice well, number one, there's no lanyard point, which, you know, I do like to put a, a lanyard on a knife if I'm going to carry it, but this one, it's clean without it. You know, I can, I can live without that. The only thing that I think is something that I don't know if it could have even been changed based on the design, but uh, first thing is the access for the thumb. It does have a little cut out there so you can get to that lock bar and you're actually looking at the edge of the insert here and then the lock bar itself but this corner right here is a little bit sharp so when you disengage with your thumb here it's not uncomfortable but you can definitely tell that there is a sharp 90 degree edge right there so again not a big deal it's not uncomfortable but I will probably take the Dremel and just round that corner over just slightly and I think it'll make a big difference in the way it feels when you close it and then the other thing that I did notice about it when you grip this knife really hard and you bear down on it and you're going to do any kind of cutting work the one area that's a little bit sharp and it kind of digs right into this area on your finger and that is this carbon fiber right here and the reason for it is because you can see when everything is flat and flush like that these two screws are halfway into the titanium lock and then halfway into the carbon fiber but when the knife is deployed you can see those two cutouts right there leave one point in the middle that that carbon fiber sticks out and it's it doesn't exactly come to a completely sharp point it's a little bit flat right there it's kind of hard to catch on camera there's a decent angle and it's not that it's sharp but you can feel it in your grip right there 
and I think if you would round that out and take that little space out, it would look goofy to not have it there. So um, probably just hit it real lightly with sandpaper to soften up a little bit, but um, other than that, this whole edge of this carbon fiber is kind of exposed when the lock bar is over, so you can feel that edge right there in your hand a little bit. And again, nothing that a piece of you know thousand grit sandpaper just lightly on there couldn't take care of and soften that edge a little bit. So overall, I think this is an amazing design. I absolutely love the knife overall. Don't think I'm you know nitpicking. It's just things that I noticed and I figured I'd share with you guys. But all in all, I think it's a killer design, and I absolutely love this one. Definitely, you know, one of the best two sons out in my book. So this is a good one. I really absolutely love this one. So the TS191 in S90V, which is the only markings on the blade. If you take this apart, I do believe, I'm not going to be able to see it on camera, but the Mazwan Mokhtar designs, they put all of the knife information, his moniker, the Tucson logo, they put it all on the inside of the scales. And I know that was a big push for him to be able to keep the blades nice and clean and sterile and no billboard. So this is, in fact, a nice looking knife. It really is a classy looking knife. So the TS191 by Maz1 Mokhtar design. So getting into some more S90V. Actually, all the rest of the ones, I think, are going to be S90V. This one, the TS224 by Jelly Jerry Design. Incredible. This is another absolutely incredible design. It fits so perfectly in my hand. You can see it just, you know, it looks like it was designed for my grip. It fits absolutely perfect. And when I looked at the specs on this one, I knew it was going to be a little bit smaller than this one here, so I just assumed I was going to like this one better. But when I opened the box for this one last night and took it out, side by side, it's kind of a tough toss-up which one I like better. There are certain points on each that I like a little bit better. But this one I do believe is more comfortable in my hand and just feels a little bit more smooth and rounded overall. And I absolutely love this thing. This is just a killer knife. I mean, Jelly Jerry has been putting out some really, really nice stuff. And this one is absolutely no exception. So get this nice carbon fiber on this side. Nothing on the, on the lock side, which honestly, I don't need that symmetrical look. It, it doesn't bother me to have one side, the show side with something, and then nothing on the lock. So that I'm fine with. But man, overall, the feeling of this one in my hand is is just perfect. The access to the thumb is a nice wide cutout. It is pretty much level across there, but there's a wide enough space in there to get your thumb in that this one is actually more comfortable to disengage than this one, just because of how big that space is. And then right out of the box, this one was smooth as butter. Drop shut, just really, really nice action. I mean, perfection right out of the box as far as it goes. I really like how the pivot is kind of recessed in there and you can see it's milled around and, and recessed out there matching on both sides which I think is really nice. Nice milled pocket clip to it. Kind of got a little turn to it to allow for the cutout for the lanyard. Really incredible design all the way around. It has this nice cutout up here so when you put your finger on to get that flipper you just have a nice big spot to hit that flipper and it I mean the action on this one is perfect blade design kind of similar to the uh, 222 it has that kind of pirate buoy knife shape to it so really just a great looking knife and I actually do have another one of these coming I got a really great deal on a second one so this will probably be a user one that I carry for sure. I do like this one a lot. So the TS224 by Jelly Jerry Design. And again, if I was going to pick 
anything about this particular design that I would even consider changing or picking at all, it would be just a tiny little bit of jimping right there at the thumb. I think that would have really given that just extra bit of traction right there by the thumb. It's not necessary. Again, it's, you know, just a... I don't know, something that I personally would have liked to see right there, but not required, especially the way the knife feels overall in hand, but it could have used just a little bit right there and would have made it even better. But other than that, man, this is a great knife. This is definitely a great new design. So, Jelly Jerry, keep it up. So, moving on, let's close this guy here. The next one I want to show you is this guy. And this is one that, again, I've been waiting for a while to finally get this version of it. And I will show you both of them side by side because I've had the other one for a little while. And this is the TS-162 by Wong Design. This is the S90V version. and. Like I said, I showed this one a while back. This is the Sandvik version that came out first. And you can see side by side, really the only difference visually is going to be that finish on the blade. The S90V has that really nice stone wash that I wish they would do on all of their blades, really. I really think it, it just makes for a more user-friendly knife. But other than that, I mean, they both are perfectly ergonomic and just a really excellent design. I mean, this is for sure top 10 material. A couple of these on the table are going to go into my new top 10, which I will probably have to do coming up soon because some of my other designs have been kicked out of the uh, top 10 spots here, and this one takes a place somewhere. So really happy to finally get the S90V version. So, TS-162 by Wong Design. And then, I think the last one I'm going to fit into this video here today will be this guy. This is the TS-159, also by Wong Design and also in S90V. This is one that I really did like the look of it as soon as it came out. I'm not sure if it's a, a very useful knife to me, personally, just you know, based on blade shape and, and what it is, but I thought it was a great looking knife, so it was definitely one that I wanted to get, and took me a little bit to get one at a decent price, but I finally got this one, I think, around 80, 85 bucks, something like that, and it took forever to come in, but it is a really nice knife. It feels very classy, really, you know, just kind of feels like a high-end knife in your hand, for sure. It does have what I consider to be perfect jimping right back here at the thumb ramp area, and I'm going to do a whole little video on jimping as a subject because there's just such a wide range of you know what people talk about as jimping and I will put my thoughts out there as far as what I consider but this goes on the list of what I think as perfect jimping about a millimeter apart right there and it just grabs the fingerprint lines on your thumb and really gives you great traction without being aggressive or rough on your thumb in any way so that right there is perfect the blade shape itself this big kind of upswept Persian blade comes out to a really really thin point Got a lot of a lot of distal taper all the way out to the tip and it has kind of a, a very thin delicate tip there so I wouldn't really consider this a, a hard use knife and this is one that if abused you could certainly break the tip off pretty easily I would think although I'm not sure how this S90V steel is it would be curious to see how well it holds up to you know tip penetration especially when it's that small and thin at the top and just see how the steel holds up so if anybody wants to volunteer to do those kind of tests destructive testing it's not really my 
my gig, but I'd be curious to see it. I would certainly watch somebody else do it. So, some things about this one that I wanted to point out, though. I really like this big lanyard spot down at the back. And then other areas that I think are really nice is the fact that the cutout for the lock is on the inside of the knife. So it makes for a nice, really clean lock side. This goes in your pocket super easy. There's just nothing to snag over here. The, uh, the disengagement is pretty tight on this one. And again, since I don't do anything to them before I show them on camera, you will see that this one could use some adjustment and tune-up also, as it is pretty easy to fail. Now, with a deliberate flick, you can get it to go all the way out, but this, I think, is probably pinched a little bit tight. And then the lock bar just has a lot of pressure on it. And operating it a few times, I noticed it was, you know, kind of fail-prone for flipping and doesn't have that nice smooth drop shut action at all so this one I will take apart but the only other thing that I noticed about this one and I don't know if you can see it right there but this is I do believe one of the first two sun knives I've ever seen that is missing a cutout for a detent ramp so that was kind of a surprise to me I thought they did it on all their blades maybe they missed this one I'm not sure if Anybody else has this, let me know if yours has the cutout for the for the detent ball. But it certainly needs it. I will be adding it because you get right to that point right there. And you got to overcome that, that hump right there. So I think this one could definitely use some minor improvements, which easy fixes. And overall, I really do like the knife and design in general. Now, I don't know if it's... Uh, if it's a keeper for me, maybe. I do like it. I like the design, but it's, it's not top 10 material but it is definitely a really nice knife so again those are some of the new s90v knives that i've gotten in recently and uh i'll try and get through some of the rest of these in another video again i've got quite a few other ones you can see i've got a chicken who wants to come and photobomb my video here but